I'm a satanic ritual abuse survivor. There's a lot of controversy around that. I strongly believe my mother had three children in order to create a cult and to do these sick crimes that fulfilled her sick desires. How much do you remember about the very first ritual that you witnessed? There was a victim named Sam. I remember my mother taking a pliers. Did your mom force you to eat Sam? Um. I recently came across one of the most disturbing and darkest demonic podcasts I've ever listened to in my life. Uh, in today's video, we're going to take a deeper look at this individual named Kibby, who is a ex-satanic ritual worshiper survivor. Uh, if you don't know who Kibby is, let me fill you in real quick. She apparently had a mom and dad who were a part of this satanic cult where they did not only animal sacrifices, but also human sacrifices. Now, Kibby also had two other siblings, two, two other sisters, and the mom and dad really kind of implemented this in them from, from when they were born to about eight years old, and these rituals would happen often. Now, I'm going to let Kibby kind of share this dark side of things instead of me explaining it to you, but prepare yourself mentally because this is disturbing. How much do you remember about the very first ritual that you witnessed? I remember my mother taking a pliers or what looked like a pliers. It was an instrument that went like that. And she was torturing a, a baby slowly. Where did the baby come from? I don't know for sure, but... I can only make my assumptions based off my experiences. There was a victim named Sam. He was eight years old from Chicago, or at least that's what my parents told me. Most traumatic night of my life. Like my mom and dad were like, he's your new brother. We had dinner with him. They called it the last supper and afterwards they sacrificed him. Now Kibby's about to go into more detail in this next clip about this sacrifice that was done to this eight year old boy named Sam. But if you didn't catch it, the mom also was torturing a baby. This was one of the first things that Kibby remembers her mom doing when it comes to rituals. Uh, this was heartbreaking to hear. And I'm going to share my thoughts towards the end. And I'm also going to pull up a specific Bible verse that really ties in all of this. I will speak on behalf of my most traumatic memory or experience, and that was with Sam, and she did speak to me during that ritual. And my mother, a big reason for her doing these sacrifices in my observations and experiences is for her to get off to it. In between rituals, she would essay us, and she would talk about the rituals, and that's how she would like get off. She got to a point where she would get off by making others do the deed as well. In cults, from my understanding, when people make something do something so guilty, where they feel so guilty and shameful, they don't want to leave. So it was my turn when I was five, almost six, to solely sacrifice um, a child. And it was Sam, the eight-year-old. We just had dinner with him. I love Sam. I'll never stop loving Sam and I'll never betray Sam. I think that he's a big reason why I'm here today recovering because it was such a traumatic memory that I've held on. So we clearly are seeing some very dark, disturbing things and hearing this, guys. Um, we have to also be aware that this stuff, sadly, is happening more often than we'd like to think. Listen, Kibby's not the only one. There are so many more out there that have gone through this, that are going through this. And my heart hurts for those kids who are being taken, those babies that are being taken, and being tortured and sacrificed in these cults. During that ritual, we had dinner with Sam, and I thought he was my new brother, and I was so excited because I'm like, this brother, this eight-year-old is going to save my broken family. And after the ritual, 
things changed pretty quick. Roles in my family changed throughout the years. For example, my older sister started to graduate towards the cleanup role, which was my father's role. So during the exact ritual itself, my, my older sister wasn't there. I remember me on my right, on the right, my younger sister on the left. My mom was behind me and she gave me a knife for my right hand and she told me to do it to Sam. I wouldn't, I couldn't. And I thought either something really bad would happen to me or Sam would get let go. So there was a lot of communication in this ritual. My mom was saying, you have to do it, you have to do it. And like I said, she always had this sense of urgency. She was just getting so mad at me. And I thought she was going to take my hand and make me do it myself. And that's not what happened. Now she's going to explain what ended up happening to Sam in this next clip. But again, guys, this is dark. She gave it to somebody else who looked very disassociated and did it themselves. Did your mom force you to eat Sam? Yes. That was my consequence for not sacrificing Sam. And it wasn't the first time I was fed human flesh. Thankfully, my mother cooked it. <laughs> I've heard of other stories where they don't. But because it was Sam, someone who I grew an attachment to, I feel like that was me drinking the Kool-Aid or taking sips. Like that's kind of what enabled me or a big factor to go into denial because I felt so guilty. And I will say I didn't eat any of them fully. Like I had this thing where I would chew it up and then when my, my mom wasn't looking, I would put it under a blanket or in a milk glass. She never said anything to me about it, thank God. But I feel like I did that to help alleviate some of the guilt. Sure. And I think it might've worked too. So we see this mom just having her children go through these things and putting her children through these rituals and causing them to do the sacrifices or eat the people that they've sacrificed, drink blood from humans and animals that they sacrificed, just very wicked and evil things. And I thought about Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, where it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Guys, this stuff that we just listened to is straight demonic. It is disturbing and dark and satanic. This is evil, but it's happening underneath our noses all the time. And we need to be aware of this. And we need to be in prayer over this. And we need to see what it is we can do to help people like Kibby and others who have been in this, who are in this currently. This stuff that her mom was doing is gross. It is disturbing and it deserves justice. Now, also, we can have hope and know the vengeance ultimately is the Lord's. And so Kibby's mom, the wrath of God is boiling over her currently. And one day, if Kibby's mom does not truly surrender herself to the Lord, that wrath of God will consume her. Real quick, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the BTT Ministry YouTube channel. Guys, if you've also been a part of this as well, and you know people who are in this or have been a part of this, please share down below. I would love to be praying for you and seeing what we can do to help with this.